Hello and welcome everyone to this special congratulatory event. I'm Mary Kate Monaghan, an intern with the United Nations Office for Disarmament Affairs. I'm Fiyin Liu, a member of the UN Youth for Disarmament Initiative, and we're your co-moderators for today's event. Before we begin, I have some helpful tips for anyone who may be unfamiliar with the WebEx platform. You will see at the top of your screen on the right hand side, a square icon which will give you an option of how to view today's event. We really highly recommend setting this to the active speaker view, so therefore you can see everyone during their delivery. For video presentations, you will see two options at the bottom right hand side of the video player when it becomes available. To enlarge the video, please press the expand view option. Now, today we will be announcing the winners of the Youth for Disarmament Initiative's 75 Words for Disarmament Youth Challenge. The contest invited young people from around the world to express what disarmament means to them and their communities in 75 words, in commemoration of the 75th anniversaries of the establishment of the United Nations and the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. To announce the winners, I'm very excited and honoured to welcome the United Nations Under Secretary General and High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, Ms. Izumi Nakamitsu. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that introduction. His Excellency Ambassador Santos Marava, Chair of the First Committee. His Excellency Ambassador Cho, Permanent Representative of the Republic of Korea to the United Nations. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the winners also. It is my pleasure to open this event and to announce the winners for their excellent contributions. There is not a more fitting occasion to announce the winners than today, during the beginning of the Disarmament Week. Before I do so, please allow me to say a few words about why we are here. Today's world is home to the largest generation in history, 1.8 billion young people. Young people have the power to effect change. Their ideas bring fresh perspectives that can help strengthen collective peace and security and to help find solutions to the world's greatest dangers. The entry into force of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons on 22nd of July, uh, January next year, 2021, which was just announced on Saturday during the weekend, was the culmination of a worldwide movement led by young campaigners to draw attention to the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of any use of nuclear weapons. This element has been central to the work of the UN since its founding and has a critical role in building a more secure and peaceful world. Reaching out to the youth requires creativity. This is why the UN Office for Disarmament Affairs, through its outreach initiative called Hashtag Youth for Disarmament, launched the 75 Words for Disarmament Youth Challenge on 12th of August, the International Youth Day. The Youth Challenge invited young people around the world to express what disarmament means to them and to their communities in 75 words. We motivated young people to think about disarmament, not as an abstract concept, but as a practical means to help prevent armed conflict and promote peace and security. Through words, this context, contest encourages youth to use their words to affect change. Words offer us all a powerful way to make sense of our thoughts and share our unique perspectives. By tapping into our imaginations, these words engage us both intellectually and emotionally. There is a quote that says, art is not a thing, but a way. The sentiments offered by the young winners today are, in a very real sense, a form of art. They help point the way to disarmament. And now it is my great pleasure to announce the winners of the contest. First, the winners in the 13 to 18 years old category. First place, Bethlehem Bayoro from Ethiopia. Second place, 
Saloni Shah of, from the United States. Third place, Marcel Luis uh, Garcia from the Philippines. And two honorable mentions, Lindsay Newark, Canada, and Menor Sin um, from India. The winners in the category of 19 to 24 years old. The first place, Christina um, Brazel uh, of Poland. Second place, Hyun Hai, Hai Nguyen of Vietnam. Third place, Ruth, Ruth George from Nigeria. And two honorable mentions, Angelo Cardona of Colombia and Lea Throm of uh, Germany. Now the winners in the 25 to 29 years old category. The first place, Valentina Bianco Homachea of Argentina. The second place, Olawa Lua August, August Sakin of Nigeria. Third place, Kerisha Haripasat of South Africa. And two honorable mentions, Vanessa Lantiengu, Canada, and uh, Swamnankita uh, Patro of India. And please excuse my bad pronunciation or mispronunciation of your names. Thank you, and, and back to you. Thank you very much, High Representative, for your thoughtful words on announcing the winners of the 75 Words for Disarmament Youth Challenge. Congratulations to you all. Now, I have the great honour of sharing the video message of our first prize winner for the 13 to 18 year group, reciting their inspiring submission and some remarks on the passion and motivations behind their entry, Bethlehem Beiru, followed by the video presentation of the winning entries for the 13 to 18 age group. For me, disarmament isn't just about taking away weapons from someone. It's also about working on the mind of that person so that he or she believes that the usage of arms to establish his or her ideology, interest, religion, or power is wrong. It means creating a global framework that is strong enough to address the frustration of people before they take violent measures and punish whoever is to blame when wrong things are done free from partisanship. I don't have a very beautiful story to tell about how I joined this challenge. It was just a coincidence. But I can now confidently say that it had been an eye-opener. So I come from Ethiopia, a country currently struggling with ethnic divisions and conflicts. Even within the past three to four months, around uh, hundreds of brutal killings have been reported. And so I know and understand the need for disarmament. But I've also seen that taking away weapons does not stop people from trying to harm each other. After all, humans are really creative when it comes to finding ways to destruct each other. So I chose to concentrate on uh, working on people's minds when I wrote my submission. On I, I stressed on working on the issues that lead to violent actions. And I'm really grateful for this conference because there is no better time to teach a person about this cause uh, than when they are young. And I hope that it brings about a generation of passionate ambassadors for the cause of disarmament, unity and peace.
Thank you very much, Beverly Ham, for sharing your fantastic submission with us. And congratulations again to all the winners from the 13 to 18 age group. Now it is my great pleasure to introduce the video message of our first prize winner for the 19 to 24 year group, reciting their winning entry and sharing some remarks on the inspiration behind their entry, Christine Bongill, followed by a video message uh, of a uh, video presentation of all the winning entries for the 19 to 24 age group. Disarmament invites us to pull down the walls, to break the barriers. It allows us to see other people as human beings, not targets or enemies. Disarmament brings relief, understanding, respect and dignity. It is a chance for a deeper reflection on the value of human life and health. A chance of survival for all beings inhabiting our planet. It is a dream which can and should become a reality. Disarmament is our common responsibility. It's a great honor and privilege to have this opportunity to speak to you today. I believe that as humans, we have the capacity to build or to destroy. Weapons bring destruction. With weapons, we are building invisible walls. And we are forgetting that on the other side of the wall, there may be people with their own dreams, hopes and sorrows. My grandmother was six years old when World War II started. And it was her, as well as my parents, who taught me the value of human life and health, that I should never take this for granted. Over the past years, I've met people who are tirelessly working towards making a world a safer and more secure place. Those people showed me that there are multiple ways for you to contribute to a peaceful, sustainable world. That inspired me to enter the Youth Challenge. It is up to us to choose good over evil. It is up to us to raise our voices and be actively involved in all aspects of agenda setting and policy making. We create peace within by connecting to our humanity. I'd like everyone to realize the importance of seeing others as human, as our brothers and sisters. Only together we can build a better world. Only a dialogue can build a bridge between people. We should all be the change, and we should all give the strength to others to make the right choices. Thank you very much. So, much, Christine, and all the other winning uh, entries of that category, really up uh, to choose good over evil. Moving to the 25 to 29 year old age group category now, it's now my great pleasure to share a video message from the category's first prize winner, Valentino Bianco Omeicha, followed by the video presentation of the winning entries from the 25 to 29 year old age category as they share their experiences of the 75 words for disarmament challenge. Disarmament means courage, courage to shift the power balance in favor of peace and courage to see the advantages of a few in favor of the well-being of many. Disarmament means commitment, commitment to redo the social contract that bonds communities together to live harmoniously. Disarmament means trust, trust among human beings who explicitly have decided to care for each other. Disarmament means hope, hope for a civilization that can and will do better. Hello, I'm Valentina from Argentina and I'm a human rights activist. I am advocating for disarmament because I strongly believe that the world in the 21st century needs to review its genuine priorities. Every dollar that is spent in weapons is a dollar that is taken out from the fight against the most pressing issues and problems that are threatening my generation's present and future such as climate change, pandemics, poverty, and all types of inequalities. 
we simply cannot tackle today's threats with the mentality of 1945. My motivation to join the Youth Challenge is based on the fact that I believe that we, the youth, must have a say in decision-making tables, especially now that the UN is marking its 75th anniversary. Even though the unequal structures and problems that govern today's world, including the issue of arms race, were given to us and young people have no role in creating them, we are still very committed to building together an alternative paradigm where we truly shift the power balance in favor of peace. Thank you. again to all of them. and thank you for such thoughtful and inspiring words i think valentina's point about disarmament means hope really rings true uh, in this current day and age i wanted to announce a viewing message from his excellency augustin santos morava of spain who is the current chair of the first committee of the united nations general assembly dear colleagues dear friends I'm sorry not to be able to be with you today, but I want to congratulate the five winners, the more than 198 entries from 62 countries that have participated in this challenge to define disarmament in 75 words on the invitation of the Office of Disarmament. The United Nations, the Charter, is linked in many ways to what happened in Nagasaki and Hiroshima in August 1945. Actually, when the Charter entered in force three months after, it was to avoid for the future what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, to avoid the horrors of nuclear war and to avoid any new arms race that would put the whole of humanity to the point of extinction by their own armaments and by their own capacity to destroy each other. Disarmament is essential today because we are facing a new arms race. And it is with the help of the youth, with the help of all of you, that we can stop that arms race, that we can bring together an horizon of peace for all of humanity. We are a single humanity. We should be united. We should face our common challenges together. We should not destroy each other through armament and through wars. Thank you very much. We thank the ambassador for his address. And I'd now like to thank the government of the Republic of Korea for their very generous support of the Youth for Disarmament initiative and give the His Excellency Mr. Cho Kyun, permanent representative of the Republic of Korea to the United Nations to address today's attendees. Uh, good morning, students young, brilliant, and beautiful minds, congratulations. Well, just 75 words to express your thoughts on disarmament, what a challenge. To be fair, I'd like to uh, make my speech in, I try, in 75 seconds. It is important to raise awareness, share your views, spread visions regarding disarmament, and non-proliferation, in particular uh, among the young generation. As such, I'm delighted to be part of this meaningful event, which has provided valuable opportunities for youth empowerment and elevated participation. I'm confident that the participation of youth in this field 
will bring about more diverse and creative opinions to the international disarmament discourse. As a result, we will be able to envision a better world free of arms race. Korea, uh, championing the youth and disarmament initiative, will continue to support more inclusive participation of youth on key disarmament and non-proliferation discussions. I encourage all of you to continue to further develop your interest in international affairs, and I look forward to seeing you again in the field of diplomacy and disarmament in the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much for your words. Very impressive 75 seconds there. And thank you so much for your encouragement and support of youth participation in disarmament efforts. I'd now like to introduce East Bergman, who is one of the incredible 10 UN Youth Champions for Disarmament, who is speaking as a representative of the 75 Words for Disarmament panel of judges. Thank you, Issa. As a young person myself, seeing how diverse and smart your entries were really made me proud of our generation. We are sometimes called snowflakes or phone addicts, we're told in other ways that we don't quite cut it as world citizens. But anyone who makes these generalizations about our generation is sure to rethink them when they read your personal narratives and poetry, which demonstrate a collective awareness of the different and layered threats that arms pose to our future. I'm speaking for myself and the other youth champion judges in this contest, Dylan and Christelle, when I say that reading your entries has energized us and reminded us about the importance of young people engaging in disarmament. Even with the help of the other judges, we could have never approached this topic from as many different perspectives as there were just among the awarded entries alone. We need many voices in disarmament because a few people simply cannot come up with as many innovative solutions as a larger group. That is why we encourage you to stay involved with disarmament in one way or another. Ask your teachers to talk about disarmament in school. Join forces with others and organize a virtual Model United Nations conference on disarmament, or when it, when it is again safe to do so, organize a school bake sale benefiting a civil society organization that works to advance disarmament. Throughout the process, you are very welcome to keep an eye on the new website of the Youth for Disarmament Initiative. You can find it under youthfordisarmament.org with the four written like the number four. If we all keep being involved, we really can make a difference together. But today, of course, just celebrate your achievement in this contest. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Lisa, for your powerful words and also those really powerful ideas, which are particularly poignant as we celebrate disarmament week this week. So this brings us to the end of the United Nations 75 Words for Disarmament Youth Challenge congratulatory event, marking the start of Disarmament Week. And we'd like to congratulate all the winners of the fantastic competition entries, which we invite everyone to please look out for on the Youth for Disarmament website, which is www.youth4, as Issa said, being the number four, disarmament.org. So we'll be sharing the winning entries over the remainder of Disarmament Week from Monday through Wednesday and honourable mentions on Thursday and Friday. Thank you again to all participants in the 75 Words Challenge for sharing the importance of disarmament and what it means to you and your community through your words. On behalf of the U4 Disarmament Initiative, thank you all for participating and attending this event and thank you to all our speakers for joining the Youth for Disarmament initiative as we engage, educate and empower youth in securing our common future.